Welcome everybody to Tino's Time. And on this episode, we are going to recap week 11 and preview week 12 of the NFL fantasy football season. But before we do all that, remember to go smash that subscribe button. Go like, go follow, go go subscribe, go follow at Tino Time 1996 on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all your social medias, and everywhere you listen to your podcast. Let's get in to everything that happened in week 11, and what a wild week 11 it was. We saw Jonathan Taylor, the best running back in the game this year for the Indianapolis Colts, put up five touchdowns and 50 fantasy points. This man was somebody that people were worried about drafting, people were freaking out during the offseason, and people were like, oh my god, why are we going to draft this guy? Him and Naheem Hines are going to split carries. Well, that's not true. Jonathan Taylor has been the best running back in the game. He was tied with Derrick Henry for rushing yards until he went out and put 183 yards this week. He completely showed that he's one of the best running backs in the game. And if you were lucky to get him like I was in one of my leagues, he's probably leading you to a very good record and he possibly could lead you to a fantasy championship. If I didn't lose Derrick Henry in one of my leagues, who knows where I would be. We saw 23 games decided by the final play this season through week 11. And that is the first time since 1970. And that just means we've seen how wild and crazy this NFL season has been. We've seen that AFC is up in the air. The Bills went from being one of the best teams this week and falling all the way to the seventh seed. 23 games decided by the final play is crazy through week 11. It was also opposite day. We saw the Texans beat the Titans we thought the Titans were the number one seed we saw the Colts demolish the Bills I didn't see that one coming I picked the Bills I thought they were going to come out but the Bills might not be the team that we thought they were the Vikings defeated the Green Bay Packers on a field goal at the end of the game to defeat them and make Aaron Rodgers go home and have a bad night and the Eagles destroyed the Saints what it was opposite day what is going on in the NFL it was crazy It was wild. I just cannot believe it. But before we talk about everything that happened on Sunday, let's talk about that Monday night football game. It was the Buccaneers versus the New York Giants. And, you know, this game was a game that everybody, you know, we were probably going to see Brady beat the spank of the out of the Giants. And, you know, we thought we we thought maybe I said it last week. I thought possibly the Giants would be able to stop Brady and that would be his kryptonite. But that just did not happen at all. The Buccaneers demolished this whole game. They won 30 to 10. Barkley for the Giants on the Giants side, he had 25 rushing yards. He had six receptions for 31 yards, which wasn't bad. But it just it's not what we expect from a guy we drafted very high. Kadarius Tony, he had seven receptions for 40 yards, so that's not bad if you started him in your flex. But on the other side of the ball, we saw Tom Brady, the GOAT, throw for 307 yards and two touchdowns. He did throw one interception, but if you were starting him on Monday night, hopefully he led you to a victory. Leonard Fournette, he didn't have a great, great game. He's been up and down this season, but he's been up a lot more than down. But this week, it wasn't just, it wasn't a good week. He had 35 yards, six receptions, and 39 receiving yards. He only had about 12, 13 points. And, you know, you probably were needing more from Leonard Fournette. But, I mean, he can't put up 20-plus points every single week. Mike Evans caught six receptions for 73 yards and one touchdown. He did end up limping off the field later in the game. So that is something that we want to keep an eye on later throughout the week to see. Because people, because people, I do want to mention before we get too far, I record this on Tuesday and injuries happen throughout the week. We saw it on Saturday. We saw Lamar come out with an illness and he didn't play on Sunday. We saw Alvin Kamara get ruled out on Saturday. There were so many guys that were ruled out on Saturday that you just have to keep an eye out throughout the week. I give you all the information I have. But I can't get always everything, and I can't predict an injury that could possibly happen throughout the week. So just remember to always keep an eye on that. Gronkowski, though. Robert Gronkowski, the return of Gronk. He, if you started him in your lineup, he put up good numbers. He had six receptions for 71 yards. And for a tight end, you know, that's not bad. And 13 points, I'll take that all day long. He He led me to a victory. Thanks, Gronk. Godwin, Chris Godwin, he was a big beneficiary of Tom Brady last night. He had 
He had six receptions, 65 yards, and one touchdown. Chris Godwin put on a show, but like we said, the Giants just could not get going. The Giants just were not very good. The offense just continues to not be very good. And, you know, we'll talk about the team that the Giants face this week, and you'll obvi- and I think you'll need to pick up their defense because their defense has been really good. And, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, and the Giants are just the Giants. Sorry if you guys heard that buzz. I got a thing on my phone, a notification. We got to keep the notifications going. You never know when we get some breaking news on Tino's time. But now that we talked about the Monday night game, let's talk about all the injuries because I mentioned it about all the injuries and all the people that were ruled out on on Saturday night, Sunday morning, and it was crazy. We did see the return of Clyde Zedware Hilaire. We did see the return of Gronk, I just said. We saw some returning guys, but Jared Goff was ruled out, and it was Tim Boyle got the start, and it looks like he'll be getting the start on Thursday versus the Chicago Bears on Thanksgiving. Yes, I said that. We'll be talking about Thanksgiving when we get to the Week 12 re- recap, but let's keep, continue to pre- let's continue to recap week 12 before we get to or the let's recap week 11 before we recap or we, before we preview week 12 oh my god my words are all messed up but back to the injuries lamar miller or lamar miller lamar jackson he was sick and he was a guy i just mentioned he was out with an illness tyler huntley got the start and he led the ravens over to a victory over the chicago bears hopefully lamar will be back this upcoming week we need you back lamar quarterback slash running back, slash wide receiver, you can do it all. In that same game, we saw Justin Fields leave the game with a rib injury. The The first initial report is that the ribs aren't broken and isn't it, it isn't as serious, but it looks like he'll probably be out on Thursday. And I don't know what it is, but if you're a Bears fan, why can't we have a starting quarterback on Thanksgiving? The last three or four years we've played on Thanksgiving, every single year we've had a backup quarterback. We had Caleb Haney start one year. We had Chase Daniels start one year. We had Josh McCown, I think, start a few years ago. We, I mean, I think the last time we had a quarterback start on Thanksgiving night was when Jay Cutler beat the Packers in 2015. It's just bad luck for the Bears. Kyler Murray, he is also... He was out this past week. The Cardinals are on a bye this upcoming week. We'll talk about that when we get to the week 12 preview. But the Cardinals are on a bye, so you're going to be missing Kyler Murray, James Conner, DeAndre Hopkins, Zach Ertz. But that's okay because hopefully after the bye, we get Kyler Murray back healthy. DeAndre Hopkins comes back healthy, and we need them for the playoff run. For the running backs, I talked about Alvin Kamara. He is still out with the knee injury. And the Bills do, the Saints do play on Thursday night, on Thanksgiving night, versus the Bills. And we talked about the Bills. The Bills just aren't the same team that they are. So if Mark Ingram gets the start, continue to start him because the two weeks that he's been out, Alvin Kamara has, Mark Ingram's put up two num- pretty good numbers. CEH returned. We talked about CEH. Daryl Williams just did not get very much going. He had 3.6 points, and CEH got a touchdown, and it looks like you have to put Daryl Williams on your bench unless something happens to CEH. But the Kansas City Chiefs are also on a bye this week, and we'll talk about their buys, and I'll be letting you know who you can start and play to Patrick Mahomes a little bit later on. Eli Mitchell, he was ruled out of the game. Jeff Wilson Jr., we thought was going to have a good game. He also did not have a good game. Eli Mitchell, though, has a finger injury, and we'll have to, again, keep an eye on it. Michael Carter, though, for the Jets, he has a high ankle sprain, and he's going to be out two to three weeks. So the Jets running backs, Ty Johnson and, or is it, yeah, Ty Johnson and Tevin Coleman are two guys that you could consider picking up this week. DeAndre Hopkins, I talked about DeAndre. He's going to be out. Cardinals are on a bye. Hopefully he's ready to come back after that. Allen Robinson has a hammy injury. He's probably going to be out on Thursday. I don't see that happening. Hollywood Brown was also out with a thigh injury on Sunday for the Baltimore Ravens, but it didn't matter because Tyler Huntley decided to have a good game and just throw it to Mark Andrews every other day. A.J. Brown has a rib injury, and that's something that we'll have to keep an eye on. X-rays were negative, so that was good, and we'll just have to keep an eye on that for the upcoming week, this game for the Titans. C.D. Lamb has a concussion, and he is he possibly could play on Thursday, but that's something you have to keep an eye on because, remember, we have Thursday night games. It's football, Thanksgiving, family, friends, football, best three Fs in, in, the, in the world and one of the best days ever. Amari Cooper, same game, Dallas Cowboys. He possibly could, or he has already been ruled out, I'm sorry, for Thanksgiving. So 
Cedric Wilson is a wide receiver that if you need a wide receiver this week on Thursday, maybe daily fantasy, if you do daily fantasy football, go pick him up and go start him because with Amari and possibly C.D. Lamb being limited and out, you know, that just, yeah. Jamal Anu, he has a rib injury and he is sadly out for the season. Get better, my guy. You'll come back stronger than ever. Tight ends, we talked about it in the Monday night game. Gronkowski is back. He put up 13 points. Thanks, Gronkowski. Adam Truman from the uh, New Orleans Saints. He had a great game on Sunday. But then, sadly, he said on yesterday he is out four to six weeks with an MCL injury. These tight ends injuries are ridiculous. It's crazy. We're just never going to be able to have consistent tight ends, people. But, I mean, I guess it is what it is. Let's get in. Before we start talking about all the good things and all the good guys that helped us win, Let's get into all the disappointments and all the guys. If you started this week, I'm sorry, but you probably took the L and now you're freaking out going into Thanksgiving. What am I going to do? I just don't know what to do. Russell Wilson at 12 points and he just was not able to get going. But we'll talk about Russell in a little bit. Don't you worry. Russell will be fine. And don't be crazy and go trying to sit him every single week. Don't be sit, Don't be starting like Andy Dalton over Russell Wilson or something crazy like that. Derek Carr had 12, or 15, I'm sorry, Derek Carr had 15.9 points. He did about the same as Russell Wilson, and Derek Carr, he just didn't seem to be very good and have a very good game at all. Jeff Wilson, he had 6.8 points, and he was supposed to be the start of the week. He was going to go off for the Giant, or for the 49ers with Elijah Mitchell out. Trey Sermon wasn't very involved, but of course, Shenanahanigans gets involved every single time, and we always fall for it because we're stupid. Nana Hannigans gave Trey Sherman the ball. Debo Samuel was in the backfield. It was just a disaster. Daryl Williams, we talked about Daryl. He is one of those guys, you know, I just cannot start him unless CEH is out. He proved yesterday, or I'm sorry, on Sunday, that with CEH in the game, they obviously wanted to get him more involved. Antonio Gibson has been an absolute disaster and a big disappointment all season long, and he continued that on su- Sunday. He had 7.5 points. And I'm sorry, but I just, I don't know. Corey Davis, I started him in one of my leagues. I think I'm just bad luck because I sat Elijah Moore and he went off for 29. But Corey Davis had six point, about 6.4 points and just didn't have a very good game. Christian Kirk, we thought with DeAndre Hopkins out, we thought, you know, Colt McCoy was going to throw to him. But nope, he had 4.5 points and that just ain't going to do it. Brandon Cooks, Tyrod Taylor put on an absolute show. We thought the Titans were going to come out and beat the Texans, and we thought that was going to be a good thing. But nope, Brandon Cooks was a disappointment as big as the disappointment the Titans were. Tyler Higby at 3.5 points, and that just, you know, tight, or I'm sorry, yeah, Higby, I'm sorry, I'm talking about tight ends for, oh, it's T. Higgins, I'm sorry, we'll be talking about Higby in a second. T. Higgins had 3.5 points, my bad, I was reading that wrong. T. Higgins had 3.5 points, and he was somebody last week that had a really good game, and he's so up and down, but, you know, with Joe Burrow, I think the Bengals will come back this week and have a better game, but I just, you know, with Jamar Chase and with the Bengals' offense as good as it is, T. Higgins is really only a deep flex option in, like, 8 to 10 or 12-team leagues or super flex leagues. Cole Clement, my bad. I told you to start him last week. I thought he was going to have a good game. But Justin Fields got hurt, and then Andy Dalton came in the game, and Andy Dalton looked towards Jimmy Graham a lot more. I forgot Jimmy Graham was on the Bears, guys. Oh, my God. Hunter Henry, he was a guy. He had three out of four games. He had a touchdown. We were going in Thursday night. He's playing the Falcons. He's going to go off. He's going to get a couple touchdowns from Mac Jones. Nope, that don't happen either. He only had 4.5 points, and that ain't going to do it. But I think Hunter Henry will be fine. And again, with the tight end position, as hard as it is to find tight ends, what are we going to do? Sit them? But let's get in to the Sunday studs and the Sunday guys that just went off and had an absolute banger of a performance. And if you had these guys, hopefully you won. But unless, you know, the only person that decided to score on my team Jonathan Taylor, you know, I cannot say much. We talked about him in the fantasy headlines. He went off for 53.4 points exactly. I know in my headlines I said 50, but to be exact, he had 53.4 points. He had 185 yards, and he had five total touchdowns. He had one receiving and four rushing, and I thought I had it. I thought I was going to win, but nope. 
My rest of my team decided to put up duds and nobody performed and I lost by 14 points people Jonathan Taylor though. Thank you for keeping me alive and getting me one victory point At least I got that Austin Eckler put up 50 points. He had two touchdowns six receptions 65 yards and he also had two receiving touchdowns this man had four total touchdowns and we've talked about Austin Eckler all season long He could possibly be that guy that you draft number one overall next year a, A, Ron, thank you for helping me win in one of my leagues and just proving that you're, one, you're still one of the best quarterbacks. And I can't even believe I'm saying that as a Bears fan, but it's just the truth. And I got to respect you. You put up 49 points, you put up 49 points, 385 yards and four touchdowns. A, Ron, good shit. And you guys lost. So that was good too. Brandon Ayuk. Who? Brandon Ayuk, you're still alive? True. Welcome back to Fantasy Football, Brandon Ayuk. You put up 21.5 points, 7 receptions, 65 yards, and 1 touchdown. Finally, thank God, we drafted you late and you finally put up a performance. Hopefully this continues because you do have a really good matchup this week. So if you are wanting to start Brandon Ayuk, I definitely would. Devontae Adams, we just talked about A-Rod. Devontae Adams put up 30.5 points, 7 receptions, 115 yards and two touchdowns. Devonta Adams, big contributor from Aaron Rodgers. And it was just awesome to see that, you know, the Packers were able to do their thing. And, you know, it just, it helped everybody out. Especially if you stacked Aaron Rodgers and Devonta Adams this season, you're probably feeling real good. Justin Herbert put up 48 points, 382 yards, three touchdowns and one interception. I have Justin Herbert in one of my leagues and Aaron Rodgers, and it's kind of hard to pick who to go back and forth. I just wish somebody would trade me for a running back because I need a running back because Derrick Henry has been out all season. I miss you, King Henry. You make sure you come back better than ever for that playoff run, though, for the, for the Titans. Hopefully they make it. Justin Herbert, though, you're continuing to put on a show. Jalen Hurts. He's a running back. Can we just put him in the running back position? He had three rushing touchdowns, 69 rushing yards, 147 passing yards, and he put up about 30 plus fantasy points. And Jalen Hurts has continued to put up fantasy points every single week. He's always in the top 10 for the quarterbacks. So if you were lucky enough to draft Jalen Hurts later in the draft, you're probably feeling real good. Justin Jefferson, guy welcome you're a baller you're one of the best wide receivers in the game you put up 37.2 points eight receptions 169 yards and two touchdowns justin jefferson and kirk cousins have a ridiculous connection let's go all the way back to thursday night and if you had the patriots defense you were feeling real good on thursday night when they put up 28 points in some leagues or 45 points depending on what type of scoring you're in the Patriots defense, if you started them on Thursday, you probably won, especially if you got those 45 points. Zach Ertz, tight end, thank you for finally proving that there's some tight end that maybe we could possibly trust, but then you decide to go on a bye week, but that's okay because you'll be fine and better than ever and healthier after the bye. You put up 28.8 points, 8 receptions, 88 yards, and 2 touchdowns. Zach Ertz, good job. Continue to put on a show and let's do it, but... Now that we talked about all the guys that were studs and helps you win your, your week, hopefully you didn't get screwed like I did with Jonathan Taylor. Let's take a second and we're going to talk about all the things that I got right and I did wrong from last week to this week. And I'm sorry, my bad. I thought Elijah Mitchell was going to do good, but like I talked about, I record on Tuesday and it's kind of hard for me to predict, you know, long-term injuries. So that's why I always say keep an eye on the injury report and always watch what these guys are doing and what is going on because you just never know so i'm sorry eli mitchell hopefully you come back better than ever and you're healthier soon because we need you my guy cole clement i told you to start him last week he didn't do very good after justin fields left the game the bears offense just continued it did not get going they let lamar's doppelganger slash clone beat him it just was not very good Hunter Henry, I talked about him. He was a very big disappointment this week. He only put up four points, but I think he'll be okay. And, you know, Mac Jones will continue to get better. And I can't believe we're even saying this. Can the Patriots really be defeat and dethrone the Bills and still win that division? My God, are we really going to see the Patriots in the Super Bowl again? Mike Williams, my bad. I told you to sit him. He's been a disappointment all season long, but he decides to go off 
catch a huge touchdown and put up 20 points. So hopefully you were lucky enough to start him because I've, I've seen him just not to have good luck. I've sat, I've had him since week four, guys. I've sat, I've started him about three or four weeks and he's put up about 30 total points. The two weeks I haven't started him, he puts up 70 plus points. It's ridiculous. I think it's me. Last week, I told you to stream Justin Fields. That didn't work out. The poor guy got hurt. It's not as serious as they initially thought it was. So hopefully he only will be missing Thanksgiving against the Lions. And Andy Dalton can somehow find the ways to get a victory. Because the Bears had a great opportunity to defeat two backup quarterbacks within a four-day span. And they just didn't do it. Mike Davis, Thursday night, we thought they were going to do their thing. The Falcons, they were. he was going to be like Cordell Patterson, right? Nope. He didn't do very good, so I'm sorry. Hopefully, you didn't start him. Last week, everybody thought the Titans were going to do their thing. Everybody thought the Titans were going to be one of the best teams ever this week. But it just did not happen. The Texans decided to play really good football. And Tyrod Taylor looked like he was the guy a few years ago. So, I'm sorry if you started the Titans like I did. I just, I can't, I'm sorry. Let's talk about all the good things, though. Let's talk about all the humble brag and all the things I got right. Debo Samuel, he continues to prove why he's the number one in the 49ers. He seems to be the running back too. So if you have Debo Samuel, continue to start him and just don't take him out of your lineup unless he's injured. Elijah Moore, you know, Elijah Moore was one of those guys that he seems to have a very good connection with Joe Flacco, just like Corey Davis and Zach Wilson seem to have a very good connection. So if Joe Flacco continues to start for the Jets, I would continue to start Elijah Moore, especially in a fax, a wide receiver two, wide receiver three, depending on what type of leagues you're in. TJ Hawkinson, I told you to sit him. He just continues to not be very productive. He's not being very good in which Jared golf out. The, the Lions are relying on Tim Boyle. And, you know, only person I told you a few weeks ago, I thought we could have trust TJ Hawkinson on the Lions. But at this point, the only person I can trust on the Lions is DeAndre Swift. Cam doesn't get five touchdowns, but he does score 30-plus fantasy points. So if you started Cam in some leagues, he got 30 points. And in other leagues, he got about 21, but I'll take that all day long. Cam Newton, I need you to do that this week because I need, I need some type of help in the quarterback position. But now that we talked about my bad and the humble brags, before we start previewing week 12 and we start talking about Turkey Day and all the turkey legs and all the food and all the family that we're going to be doing on this Thursday, let's talk about the three things that I learned from week 11. And the first thing that I learned is the Bears need to fire everybody. Everybody. Go bye-bye. Matt Nagy, bye. Ryan Pace, bye. Everybody, bye. You lose to to Lamar Jackson doppelganger. The Bears defense can't play. They continue to have pass interferences. The offense got going for a second. It just It's a disaster in Chicago, and the Bears need to fire everybody after that. They had an opportunity to gain two games in four days, and they did not do it, and it was, it was awful to see. So everybody in Chicago needs to be gone. There we go. I got my venting out for the week. The Bills aren't the team that we thought they were. The Bills were supposed to be that team to go to the AFC Championship. They were winning the Super Bowl this year. They were doing their thing. But it just did not happen, and it hasn't been what we thought it was. The Bills have continued to struggle. And, you know, it's not one of those things I'm telling you to sit Josh Allen and sit Stephon Diggs and Dawson Knox and everything like that. But it's one of those things that the Bills just aren't the team and they're not as dominating as we thought that they were. So as like this Thursday, they're playing the Saints. If Alvin Kamara's out, I'd still start Mark Ingram. I maybe stream Trevor Simeon. We'll talk about him in my streams a little bit later on. There's guys that you can start against this Bills defense because they're just not the same. And this might be their get right game and they might go out and ball out on Thanksgiving. But until I see it, I just cannot trust the Bills. The last thing that I learned is fantasy football is pure luck. Guys, I mentioned it. Jonathan Taylor scored 50 points, and I still lost. I, You know, I don't even know how that happens. I had seven other guys that could have scored points, and I scored 70 points from all other seven guys, and then one guy scored 50 points, and I still lost. You know, yeah, the guy that I faced had Jalen Hurts and Joe Mixon and stuff. But fantasy football is pure luck. And it just, you need to make sure that you watch the matchups. You just never know because one guy could have a good week this week and a guy could have a good week next week. And it just, yeah. So fantasy football is pure luck. And it's just one of those things that you just have to watch out for. But now that we previewed week 11, let's get ready 
to recap, or now that I'm sorry, now that we recapped week 11, I keep messing up my words, I'm just so excited to talk about week 12. Let, and now that we recapped week 11, let's get in and let's preview week 12. Let's start talking about week 12 now. But wait a minute. We got some breaking news on Tino's time. The Chicago Bears have said and reported. They had a press conference. I heard. I've read it. They are saying that the last game from Matt Nagy will be on Thursday, the Thanksgiving game versus the Detroit Lions. So keep an eye on that because if that becomes true, it should be interesting to see who the next coach for the Chicago Bears will be. And hopefully this will be the last coach the Bears can find and they can finally find somebody to put in place to let the development grow the development grow for Justin Fields and the Bears can finally be a good football team. But now that we got some breaking news out of the way, let's start getting into week 12. And it's finally Thanksgiving, one of the best times of the year, best day of the year, Thursday. We got three phenomenal football games, spend time with family, eat some food, and just have a good day. But before we start talking about the Thanksgiving games, let's talk about the teams that are on a bye this week. We have the Kansas City Chiefs and the Arizona Cardinals, and we're missing a lot of guys. We're missing Patrick Mahomes, Daryl Williams, Clyde Tedward Hilaire, Tyreek Hill, the best tight end and the only one we can really trust every week, Travis Kelsey on the Cardinals. Kyler Murray's been out, so that's good that he'll get another week of rest. DeAndre Hopkins been out for a while, but that's good that he gets another week of rest. But James Conner is gone, Christian Kirk, all the guys, Zach Gertz have, is gone. So we'll have to figure it out and get everything going. And we'll have to, I'll be able to tell you and I'll let you know all the guys you can start in their place. So don't you worry because we'll be able to figure out the Patrick Mahomes situation. He hasn't been the best quarterback in the world this season. So it's not like he's been putting up 50 points a game. So that's okay. But speaking of guys that have been putting up 50 points a game, let's get into my bold predictions. And my first bold prediction for week 12 is Jonathan Taylor is going to do it again. And he's going to put up 50 plus points again. Jonathan Taylor, best running back in the game. So far, he's like Derrick Henry 2.0. I don't know what's going on. Jonathan Taylor has just been phenomenal this season. So he might just do it again. And my bold prediction, he's, he's going to put up 50. And he's going to be a, a running back to score 100 plus points in two weeks in a season. And that would just be ridiculous. We see another tie. You know, I was looking at the schedule. We have a lot of interesting matchups. We have the Bengals and Steelers. We have the Eagles and Giants. We have the Seahawks and Redskins. We have the Colts and Buccaneers. We have so many. We have so many matchups that I feel like there could be a matchup that could possibly end up in a tie. My last bold prediction is the Cowboys get destroyed on Thanksgiving. The Cowboys are missing Amari Cooper. He's already been ruled out. We'll be talking about the Thanksgiving games in a little bit. Actually, next we'll get into the Thanksgiving games. So let's get into the Thanksgiving games and let's talk about it because. Like I just said, my bold prediction is the Cowboys will get destroyed on the, by the Raiders. And why do I why do I say that? Let's talk about that game first. The Cowboys and Raiders will be the three o'clock game. The Cowboys always seem to play at three o'clock. And like I mentioned, they are missing Amari Cooper, Ezekiel Elliott. They did not practice yesterday, but he was a limited participant in practice if they were to practice. But he also got hurt and he was questionable. And it's a short rat, short week. So they might just be cautious and they might sit him. So Tony Pollard is somebody that if you need a running back and if Zeke is out, you should already have him on your backup. You should always have his handcuff because you just never know. So if Tony Pollard gets the start for the Cowboys on Thursday, he will be getting a, he would have a, a good matchup. And, you know, again, you need a running back. Pollard could be a good start. But I said in my bold prediction, I think the Raiders can destroy the Cowboys because we saw the Cowboys the last few weeks, we saw them play versus Denver. They were awful. We saw them play again, and they were good. And then this week versus the Chiefs, they were awful again. Which Cowboys team is going to show up, and is Dak going to be able to work with Cedric Wilson? And I think Cedric Wilson is a good stream because Dak's got to have somebody to throw to. Also, Dalton Schultz if you need a tight end this week. But I just think that it could happen, and I think the Cowboys could possibly be destroyed by the Raiders so that's why that's my bold prediction and that was why I wanted to get right into the Thanksgiving games and talk about it the other game on Thanksgiving 
It will be the 11:30 game. It's the Chicago Bears versus the Detroit Lions. And this game now has become a tradition, and it seems that it's becoming one of those things that the Bears and Lions play every season. And I just mentioned it, some breaking news, Matt Nagy, this could be his last game. And you know, it's not official official, but if it becomes official, and this is something you have to watch the next couple days, and we do see a report, maybe we'll see one later on, and make sure to check out Tino's time for all the breaking news, and I'll keep you updated on that. But if that those rumors are true and everything, then Matt Nagy might be gone and the Bears might be looking for a new quarterback after Thursday. But with Justin Fields out, Andy Dalton will probably get the start. And we saw him and Darnell Mooney had a really good connection. I don't think Allen Robinson will be back yet. Jimmy Graham seemed to get involved. David Montgomery is one guy we'll be talking about him in my starts and sits. I think he'll be bounced back and I'll have a really good game. On the Lions side of the ball, DeAndre Swift, I talked about it earlier. He's the only one, honestly, I trust in this team. Let's talk about the best game, though, on Thursday. And, you know, it's going to probably be one of those games that we're going to say we the Bills have been not very good. We talked about the Bills versus the Saints, New Orleans. New Orleans, you know, they've played on Thanksgiving a lot the last few years, too. They played the Vikings a few years ago. Alvin Camaro went off. You know, they just seem to be that team that also plays on Thanksgiving, and that's fine. I love having Thanksgiving games. It's awesome. 11.30 to 10 o'clock. It's like a Sunday, and there's only three games on, and you get to spend time with family. That works, too. But the Bills and Saints is going to be a really good game, and this game it could be uh, uh, this game is a game that we'll be talking about later on in my fantasy gold segment that I always do, where I think you could start everybody, start Josh Allen, start Stephon Diggs, start possibly Ste- Devin Singletary if you absolutely have to. Zach Moss only had .5 points last week, and he just did not get going. I think he actually left the game and got hurt, but I think he came back. We'll have to see, and that's something else you have to keep monitoring on. But I think you could start everybody. Mark Ingram, I talked about it. The Bills' defense isn't what they once were. You know, the Saints need to have someone to throw to. So, Marquez Callaway, you could still start. Trevor Simeon, I'll be talking about him in my streams too. You could start him at quarterback. So, Thanksgiving games, they all should be good. I'm going to take the Bears to win. I'm going to take the Raiders because I said the I said that it's going to be the, that they're going to destroy the Cowboys. So, I'm going to go with the Raiders and... I'm going to go with the Bills. I think the Bills will somehow find a way to win. It's it's not saying that it's going to be a complete blowout. I think it's going to be a really good game, really back and forth. So, you know, I would love to see an absolute shootout because I have a lot of guys in this game. But I think the Bills will come out and win. And those are my Thanksgiving picks. I hope everybody has a safe and happy Thanksgiving. And I'm sure we'll be talking more about these games as we go on. But now that we talked about the Thanksgiving games, let's get into the guys you can pick up. You can start, sit, and stream, and let's get into the players that we need to actually put in our lineups for all the injuries, all the disappointments, all the bye weeks, because we have a lot of guys that are on bye, even though there's only two teams. It's two of the teams that we rely on in fantasy football the most, so hopefully you don't have too many Chiefs like my uncle does, and you're not freaking out with bye weeks this week, but my number five waiver wire pickup for week 12 is the Eagles defense versus the Giants. Giants have just not been able to get going. The Eagles defense has been very good this season. We saw what the Buccaneers did to the Giants last night. So if you need the if you need a defense, go pick up the Eagles and start them this week versus the Giants. Number four, I talked about the Cowboys game, about how I think the Raiders are going to destroy them. They possibly bold prediction, but it could go the absolute other way, and it could be an absolute shootout, and they could you know the Cowboys could win on Thanksgiving. But Cedric Wilson, if you need a wide receiver, especially if you have Amari Cooper, if you have C.D. Lamb, I would definitely consider to starting starting him this week on Thanksgiving because the Raiders, they're a good defense, but Dak Prescott has to have somebody to throw to, right? If, especially if those two are out. Number three, the Jets running backs. You're telling, you're, you, you want me to pick up Jets players? I mean, I'm not telling you to like, I, I, I mean, yeah, I am. I just, you know, with... Michael Carter getting hurt. Ty Johnson has been very effective in the offense. Tevin Coleman, he was on the Falcons. Oak Forest native. Shout out to you, Tevin. You're doing great things. Thanks for thanks for proving that even if you come from the uh, from down down south and south side of Chicago, you can do great things. If you need a running back, though, definitely Tevin Coleman and Ty Johnson versus the Texans. I know the Texans played phenomenal last week and they made the Titans look awful, but. 
I mean, the Texans still are not that great of a team. And I think you could even start the Texans defense too this week. But again, if you need a running back, desperately go pick up the Jets running backs. But a guy we talked about earlier, Elijah Moore for the Jets too. I can't even believe I have two Jets in my waiver wire pickups. But Elijah Moore had a phenomenal game last week. He seems to have a really good connection with Joe Flacco. So if you need a wide receiver this week, if you're missing DeAndre Hopkins, if you're missing Tyree Kill, if you're having injuries left and right, if you know, if there's just there's so many crazy injuries and just so many things going on this week, Christian Kirk's on a bye. So, you know, if you need a wide receiver and especially if Joe Flac- Flacco continues to start, Elijah Moore could be a great flex option. My number one waiver wire pickup. He's back. He said it. He proved it on Sunday. The Panthers let him down. But Cam Newton went out and put on an absolute show and made it look like he was never left the Panthers. And he was on the Patriots. Did everybody forget that? But I cannot believe 32 teams let this man sit at home. Cam Newton is back and he should be back on your fantasy football rosters. I talk about it. I talked about it last week. You should have picked him up before he had a game like this. So now if you didn't, go pick him up. It's going to be a little bit harder. He does have a matchup against the Dolphins this week. So if you're struggling at quarterback like I am, I got to start Super Cam. Don't let me down, Super Cam, because we got to get that dub and we need to prove that Tino's time's going to take all those old men down in the 12-man fantasy football league I do. Just got just got to take some shots. You know, I got to do it. I got to take that money. You got to prove to everybody why Tino is the fantasy football professional. But <laughs> now that we got the waiver wire pickups out of the way, let's go get into the starts and sits for week 12. And my start of the week, I just said it, Cam Newton, Dolphins, fins up. Not that I don't think that the Dolphins are a good defense. They are very good. But, you know, they didn't look very good last week, and we thought they were going to do great things, but they just did not versus the Jets, and the Jets had a lot of fantasy points, so I think that you can start Cam Newton. DJ Moore is another guy. He finally is back from the dead now that Sam Darnold is gone, sitting at home with his injury. Get better, Sam Darnold. But Cam Newton has proven that he could take the Panthers as a fifth or sixth seed into the NFC playoff picture. Tyrod Taylor versus the Jets. Tyrod Taylor last week, Did great things. He did phenomenal work. And he just proved that he was really good. And now he gets to go up against the Jets. The Jets defense is just not very good. And, you know, Tua didn't have a phenomenal, phenomenal game. But he did throw a touchdown. He did have a lot of rushing yards. So if you need a quarterback desperately, if you're missing Patrick Mahomes, if you've been dealing with Kyler Murray on the injured list, if you're starting Colt McCoy, I don't know why you would be starting Colt McCoy. Maybe Taylor Heineke. I would definitely consider starting Tyrod this week. David Montgomery versus the Lions. The Bears need to rely on David Montgomery. Huge this week. The Lions are 0-9-1. And and please, Bears, do not be that team to lose to the Lions. Because if they do, I'm giving up on the season. And I just don't even want to be a Bears fan anymore. And I'm just going to crawl in the hole and die. But David Montgomery, start him this week. Because I think he'll be good and he'll be ready to go. The Saints running backs. And you say, why the Saints running backs? Why don't you say Alvin Kamara? Because depending on how it goes, we talked about Alvin being hurt this past week and he was out. Now it's a short week. So I think the Saints possibly give him one more week of rest. And, you know, like I said, they play on Thursday night. So give Mark Ingram. He's been definitely consistent. He's put up 15 plus points these last two weeks. So if you need a running back, start Mark Ingram. Or if Alvin Kamara, obviously you're going to start Alvin Kamara. Darnell Mooney. Caught an absolute banger of a touchdown. He made the Baltimore Ravens dick, dip, dive, dodge, and duck. And he made them make all types of moves. And he ran for the touchdown. And he had a lot of receptions, a lot of catches. And he just did great things. He caught a touchdown, like I said. And versus the Lions, Andy Dalton will probably be getting the start. And again, I talked about Allen Robinson. He probably won't be back just yet. So I think that Darnell Mooney is a great start this week, especially, like I said, we have Tyree Kill, DeAndre Hopkins, Christian Kirk. There's a lot of wide receivers that are hurt, C.D. Lamb, Amari Cooper. Elijah Moore, I just talked about him too. He's going up against the Titans, and I think that the tight or no, he's going up against the Texans. I'm sorry. Joe Flacco is probably going to get the start this week, so pick up Elijah Moore if you haven't yet. I did in one of my leagues, and I'll be starting them. So start him this week versus the Texans, especially if Joe Flacco is starting. 
Rob Gronkowski, welcome back to Fantasy Football. If you were worried about Rob Gronkowski last night, you shouldn't have and you should have started him. But if you didn't and you were worried, he proved last night that he's good to go and he's ready. So put him in your lineup versus the Colts because I think that game is going to be fantasy gold, people. The, the other tight end that you can start this week, I can't even believe I'm saying it again, but Gerald Everett, he had a really good game last week. And, you know, the Washington FT's defense has been up and down, but Russell seems to like him. And Russell, you know that Russell's back. I think he'll be getting better as the weeks go on. And we'll be talking about Russ again in a little bit. But it's one of those things, don't freak out about Russ. And, yeah, so start Gerald Everett this week. My defense that you need to start this week is the Eagles. I said to pick up the Eagles, start them versus the Giants. Giants just seem to not be able to get anything going and the Eagles defense has been one of those defenses that have been really really good this this season no matter who they've played and they've even stopped some really good other people that we didn't think that they would the sits for the week now let's get into the guys you need to sit and you need to keep on your bench this week Baker Mayfield versus the Ravens Baker Mayfield I don't even know why you'd be starting them but if you have to and you're desperate I still wouldn't start them there's other people I'll give you some streams in a second don't start Baker versus the Ravens this week the other quarterback that you need to sit this week it's Tua Tylovunga versus the Panthers the Panthers defense have been very good this season and with Cam Newton's return and the re resurrection of the 2015 Carolina Panthers I just, you know, there's other quarterbacks that you can stream this week other than Tua Tagovailoa. The running backs you need to sit this week, Zach Moss and Devin Singletary. The running backs for the Bills, the Bills offense and the Bills defense, we talked about it a lot this episode about how they just have not been the team that we thought they were and you know they're going up against the Saints and the Saints defense is very good and it's just one of those things I can't trust the Bills running backs. Another team's running backs I just cannot trust is the Titans. We've had so many running backs between Jeremy McNichols. He was out this past week. Adrian Peterson, Devontae Foreman, we saw. that We saw so many running backs. I just cannot trust them at all. So sit all the Titans and just honestly, if you can, get them off your rosters. And there's just, I know it's running back position is so hard to come by this season, but I just cannot trust them. And especially versus the Patriots this week, I just don't know how well that's going to go. Kenny Galladay versus the Eagles. The Giants are just a disaster. Kenny Galladay has just continuously struggled and not been very good all season long. And I don't think he's going get, to get going versus the Eagles. The wide receivers for the Lions. The wide receivers for the Lions are just... I'm not saying that they're not going to have a good game. The Bears secondary is awful. We talked about it in the Thanksgiving games. But it's just one of those things that I, you know, I can't trust them with Tim Boyle. I feel like he's just going to check it down to DeAndre Swift a lot. Maybe TJ Hawkinson gets involved a little bit. I talked about him earlier on too. It's just one of those things I cannot trust the Lions wide receivers. The two tight ends that you're going to sit this week, Evan Ingram versus the Eagles. I just, again, cannot trust Daniel Jones and that, that Giants offense. It's just not very good. Dan Arnold, you might be saying, why are you telling me to sit Dan Arnold? I'm, I know tight ends are so hard to come by. He's been very good and very consistent this season so far. And it's just one of those things. But the Falcons have been very good versus tight ends this season. They didn't give up a touchdown to Hunter Henry after he went three to four, three out of four games with a touchdown. He was doing his thing and he just was not doing, you know, the Falcons defense just have been very good. So sit Dan Arnold if you have a better option. But if you're desperate, I get it if you have to start Dan Arnold. The 49ers defense versus the Vikings. Kirk Cousin has been on an absolute roll. Adam Thielen's doing his thing. Justin Jefferson's having a phenomenal season. Dalvin Cook's finally staying healthy. And, you know, I just don't know how, I don't know if this game's going to be high scoring, low scoring. I don't know what it's going to be, but I don't want to take that chance, especially if Kirk Cousin comes out hot in the beginning of the game and he goes out and scores a couple touchdowns. Then all of a sudden your defense already gave up 14 points. So there's better defenses to stream this week than the 49ers. So sit the 49ers. But we keep saying streams. Let's get into all the streams. And now that we said all the sits, let's talk about all the guys that you can stream for all the guys that you have to sit this week. Trevor Simeon versus the Bills. I talked about how the Bills, again, are not the same defense that they were. They're not the same team that they were. And they're just not the team that we thought they were going to be. And I could be absolutely wrong. And this could be a game, get right game. Bills go off. Josh Allen has seven touchdowns. Stefan Diggs has a couple. You know, it could be one of those games. But, again, I just feel like, you know, I think that Trevor Simeon's going to have a good game either way. He's going to have to come back. He's going to, whatever it may be. Kirk Cousins is the other quarterback you can stream. 
honestly, you should be starting this guy every single week. He's been constantly consistent with Adam Thielen, uh, Tyler Coughlin, Justin Jefferson, Dalvin Cook, all the weapons that he has, Kirk Cousins, Super Kirk, Captain Kirk, whatever you want to call him. He's been doing his thing all season long. So if you have Patrick Mahomes, if you have an anxiety attacks, Kyler Murray, if you have a quarterback that continues to struggle, start Kirk Cousins this week versus the 49ers. The two running backs I, I'm going to tell you to start, it's the, or to stream, I'm sorry, Ty Johnson versus the Texans. I talked about the Jets running backs to pick up, and Ty Johnson is the one that I feel like I can trust the most out of the running backs for the Jets because, you know, Tevin Coleman's there, and I'm sure he'll be involved, but Ty Johnson seems to always be involved in the passing game, and if Joe Flacco's in there, you know, Joe Flacco used to love to check it down to Ray Rice. Oops, maybe I shouldn't have said that name, but it is what it is. You know, he used to like to check it down when he was on the Falcon or when he was on the Ravens, so I think that Ty Johnson could have a very good game. Tony Pollard versus the Raiders. I talked about it with the Thanksgiving games. Zeke is, is questionable. Amari Cooper's out. C.D. Lamb is hopeful to play, but with the concussion, you just don't know. So if Zeke is out, it ruled out on Wednesday, because again, this is recorded on Tuesday. If he is ruled out tomorrow, Thursday morning, Tony Pollard becomes a really good RB2 flex option. And you could put him in your lineup and you could be sitting there on Thanksgiving eating some turkey and watch Tony Pollard score some touchdowns. And maybe, maybe bold prediction, Tony Pollard starts and he has a game like Jonathan Taylor did last week. Hopefully he does. The wide receivers that you can stream, I'm going real deep. It's Tyler Johnson versus the Colts. With Antonio Brown... Mike Evans limped off the field a little bit yesterday off Monday Night Football. We don't know who's going to be available at wide receiver. But after Mike Evans left the game, Tyler Johnson got some more catches and got involved a little bit more in the Buccaneers offense. So if you need a wide receiver to stream this week as a flex wide receiver three in deeper leagues, Tyler Johnson is a really good play. Cedric Wilson's, I also talked about him a lot. I've mentioned his name a lot. You could definitely feel comfortable streaming him this week. I've talked about the Bears receivers. There's so many receivers out there that you can stream, but there's just so many guys that I feel like you can sit. You know, I told you about Elijah Moore and stuff like that. There's just, yeah, Cedric Wilson, though, you could definitely start him or stream him this week versus the Raiders on Thursday, especially if C.D. Lamb is ruled out. Dawson Knox versus the Saints. Dawson Knox seems to continuously get better as the weeks come back and as he's coming back from his injury. So if you need a tight end on Thanksgiving, start him and feel good and stream him with Josh Allen to him throwing him the ball. Hunter Henry, he had a bad game last week versus the Falcons, but he's going to bounce back versus the Titans. And I, I, I'm going to tell you, I, I think he'll get a touchdown. And that's what we rely on with tight ends is getting that touchdown. So Hunter Henry is a tight end that you can stream this week. And the defense that you can stream this week, I can't even believe I'm saying it. As I mentioned, breaking news earlier on Tino's time, there are rumors and reports that Matt Nagy's last game will be on Thursday versus the Lions. So I'm telling you to stream the Bears defense. Tim Boyle is starting. We don't know who's going to be available at wide receiver. I really can't tell you who their number one is. I think it's Cespis, but I think they're not Cespis. That's, that's flipping the guy from... Yeah, that that's baseball never mind wrong sport but yeah i just don't know who the wide receivers are for the lions and like i said the only guy i can really trust on lions is deandre swift so if you need a defense the bears played really good versus huntley even though they gave up that last touchdown on their last drive they had a lot of sacks they had a turnover they had a couple of interceptions and stuff like that so if you need a defense to stream this week versus tim boyle on thanksgiving daily fantasy football leagues i'd go with dub bears and hopefully the Bears can get back on track and maybe we could have a good Thanksgiving. Can the Bears please win a game? But now that we talked about all the guys that you can sit, start, and stream, let's talk about the games. And let's talk about the three games that I think is going to be fantasy gold for week 12 where you need to start all your guys and it's just going to be a fantasy bonanza. Bills and Saints, we've talked about this game a lot and the sits and starts everywhere this whole episode. Bills and Saints start everybody in that game. Trevor Simeon, Josh Allen. I only, like I said earlier, the only people I wouldn't start is the Bills running backs. Start Stephon Diggs, Cole Beasley, Dawson Knox, Trevor Simeon, Mark Ingram, Alvin Kamara. If he plays, Marquez Callaway. You know, I just, I would start these guys and I would, yeah, just feel good about it. 
the Rams and Packers. This game could go either way. It could be back and forth, defensive, back and forth. But I'm hoping that it's going to be high scoring. You know, the Rams are coming off their bye. Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford had a couple. Probably They probably ate breakfast every day, and they, they didn't have to go to practice. So they were like, let's just chill and watch some more. So I'm sure Cooper Cup's going to have like 200 yards receiving. I'm sure he will. Because, you know, Cooper Cup's just been the best in the world this year at wide receiver. So, just start all your Rams and start all your Packers. Aaron Rodgers had a phenomenal game. A.J. Dillon will be there out there one more game. Because I think that you should just give Aaron Jones the bye week and let him come back after the bye. So, start all your Packers. Obviously, Devontae Adams. Maybe MVS is a deep sleeper. Start all your Colts versus Buccaneers. I said this might be the game of the week and this might be the best game of this of the week and the season possibly. The Colts versus the Bucks. The Bucks defense has not been, you know, they were good yesterday versus the Giants, but it's the Giants and you know, yeah, but John, Jonathan Taylor put up 50 and this is why I think Jonathan Taylor could put up 50 again. I said it in my bold predictions, he might just do it again and put up 100 points in 2 weeks and that would be a phenomenal thing for me because then maybe I can win this week. Maybe, I don't know. But Start all your Colts, Carson Wentz, Michael Pittman, even maybe Mo Alley Cox is the deep sleeper tight end. Maybe start Tom Brady, Leonard Fournette, Chris Godwin. I talked about Tyler Johnson, Rob Gronkowski. Start all your, your Buccaneers. And those are the three games that I think are going to be fantasy gold for week 12. Now, let's talk about my three guarantees that I think are going to happen for week 12. It's the three things that I guarantee you every week that should happen. And, you know, every week I say it, but it just doesn't seem to happen. But let's see if we can get this right. The Bucks and Colts, I said it, game of the week. I guarantee you that will be game of the week. And I guarantee you it will be fantasy gold. Third time's the charm for Russ. Russ is playing on Monday Night Football. He's going up against the Washington FT. We saw what Cam Newton did. So I guarantee you, third time's the charm. Russell Wilson will be back, and he will put up 30-plus fantasy points on Monday Night Football. And if you're Russell Wilson, he'll be taking you and bringing home that dub on Monday nights. The Texans will continue to play good versus the Jets. Tyrod Taylor, possibly, hopefully, Brandon Cooks. We talked about it again in the disappointments. He's been really bad this season, and it's just not very good. But I think the Texans are going to win this game, and I think the Jets will continue to play good, you know, but I just think the Texans will come out on top of this game. And, you know, not saying the Jets will play awful, but I guarantee you the Texans will continue to play good. As better, They've been playing a lot better than we thought. I guess they aren't the team that we could start defenses against because they proved versus the Titans last week that they weren't. And there you have it. I've recapped week 11. I've previewed week 12. We've talked about all the Thanksgiving games, injuries, sits, starts, disappointments. We went through it all. I hope all of this information helps you. We only have three weeks, two weeks, four weeks, depending on what type of league you're in, depending on if four or six teams make it to the playoffs. We only have a few weeks left in the regular season, so every win, win is crucial. Every single point is crucial because some leagues you win and you advance and you're in front of guys depending on how many points you score. So no matter what, even if you don't care and you're worried, make sure you always start your team because you never know. You might make the playoffs because you started a guy and he had 30 points one week and you just never know. So we only have, like I said, three to four, whatever it is, two weeks left into the season. Every win counts. Every win matters. I hope everybody has a safe and happy Thanksgiving. Go eat some turkey. Watch three, hopefully, good football games. Bears could get that dub. That would be nice. Raiders could upset the Cowboys. And the Bills maybe might get on track. I hope everybody, again, have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. Eat some food. Spend time with family. But remember, and for most, be safe. We're getting through this crazy stuff, and we're almost through it, and let's go. So for the last time, again, I'll say it one more time. Have a safe and happy Thanksgiving, and until next week when we recap Thanksgiving and we recap Week 12 and we get ready for Week 13 of the NFL Fantasy Football season, this is your boy Tino signing out.